What? I duck his eldritch energy wars past me. He's finally had enough. He's ridding himself of the dead weight and his obligation to help me all in one. Something brushes against my shoulder and I flinch as it wriggles its way along my armpit, pulling tight. Another blast shoots past me, and whatever grit me is blown away. I turn, but there's nothing there. There's... Yeah. Right. The true threat is behind me now. What? Take a deep breath. You're like a magnet to those things right now. Hmm? Oh. Those things. The lavender truly wore off, hasn't it? Arthur places a hand on my back and pushes me forward. Snap out of it. I can't protect you if we get swarmed. Swarmed? The state this city is in, they're stupidly strong. It's already very close to their conceptual ideal. Conceptual ideal? So, how'd you learn about runes? Alright, so he's actually playing this really smart, taking my mind off of the anxieties. His anxieties causes panic, and panic draws them. I can't keep up. Marie, my best friend, found a book by accident. Yeah, people really ought to pay better attention to where they leave those things. I agree. We scoured antique shops for more books as a hobby. Why are we having a conversation like this? What's happening? Most people who dive into the material like that usually end up making a deal sooner or later. My friend did. Oh, I get it. He's distracting me. It's like the 3 2 one exercise. Still, my skin crawls where his hand is pushing me forward. Away from... I guess they didn't make it. That's one way of putting it. Alright, so we can, can we just take a second to appreciate this character model? Like, look at it. It looks crisp, it looks clean. The blinking and the yellow eyes is an awesome touch. Yeah. You done with your panic attack? So I was right. Yes, thank you. We have to find Patrick and then we'll part ways. Not much longer. You know, that woman is probably better off with her brains scattered across the pavement anyway. Did he even pay attention to who he killed? Ugh. I'd rather not talk about that. What he said can't be true. There has to be a way to save these people. If the best outcome for all of them is a quick and painless death, I can't accept that. Isn't there some way to revert what happened to them? I thought you didn't want to talk about it. What will make... Blech. What will it take for him to decide that my brains are better off decorating the pavement? I don't. I want to find Patrick, if he's still alive. And then I want to get away from this monster. I almost felt prey to those things moments ago. Patrick doesn't have a warlock to blast them. Does that make him the lucky one or me? Does he stand a chance on his own? Guns, swords, poisons. Do any of them work against those monsters? We've been drinking a lot of lavender. It keeps those things at bay. I'm afraid that Patrick's kidnappers took him to stop him from doing so. Why do I keep talking to this monster? Did you see someone take him? I'm desperate for reassurance. That's all there is to it. No, I wasn't around. I should have been. It's my fault they got to him. Getting it off my chest is a small relief. But I'll take what I can get. Yeah, she'll either want to interrogate him or she may as well have blasted him. Anything else is just silly. Is this supposed to comfort me? Is he saying someone may have blasted Patrick like Arthur blasted that? No, the 
This train of thought will get me killed. I shake my head. Who is this she you're talking about? Unlike Patrick, Arthur doesn't seem to mind conversation at all. The shit for brains behind all this. <clears throat> Once we leave the town square behind, the herd thins. And they all like to congregate for their daily socializing, leaving their outer streets deserted. To my relief, what must be the lower class part of town is free of that unnatural perfection. Potholes are dotting the streets, and the houses are run down as expected. It's unlike some parts of the state I live in. I hug my elbows, shuddering. So a single person calls all this misery? The spell floats across a rotten fence and into someone's overgrown backyard. The level of neglect suggests that whoever owns this place didn't care for it, even before all this went down. Archer's voice is low now, possibly to prevent tipping potential enemies off. Not like I've seen anything that could hear us. No, physically. Maybe I should take another sip of my tea. Um, he says we're getting close, and I only have two or three sips left of what I have your tea. Let's take a sip. One moment. I smash my thermos and screw it, swallowing a sip before I change my mind. Sorry, I'm ready now. For good measure, I also pull my gun. Alright, let's go save the damsel. <laughs> we push forward around the house and into its backyard. Rounding the corner, I freeze for a moment before breaking into a sprint. It's him. Patrick. We found him. Careful. Arthur kept his promise. Uh -huh. Patrick stands in the middle of the lawn, rigid, with his head cocked as if he's listening to something. Those white creatures are wrapped neatly around him, but his height and build, his gun peeking out the absurd white cover. I hate not being able to blast straight at it. No. No blasting. No shooting. I holster my gun. Patrick? Whatever happened, it's my fault. I chance another step towards him and jump when a hand on my arm stops me. Careful. I'm not sure if they are transferable. Even the side model looks really nice on our turn. I'm the one that let him get taken. I have to help him. Archer lets go of me and I inch closer towards Patrick, keeping an eye on my surroundings. Everything is normal. No noises popping up out of nowhere, no intrusive thoughts. Nothing moves in the corner of my eye. The lavender's doing his job. Patrick? Can he hear me? Patrick? There has to be a way. Patrick, I'm here to save you. I, my last word he jerks, turning around to face me. I reel, stumbling backwards as whatever had wrapped him up unwinds with jerky movements before folding out of existence. Wait. And this character model, look at that. Something isn't right. Or... What is it, right? What is it that's throwing me off? It's not like the other villagers to interrupt the process. Um, uh... His voice rasps sluggishly, and he blinks before his face hardens, furrowing in anger. What are you doing here? Saving you? If anything, his skull deepens. Saving me? From what? this. None of this makes sense. Didn't he notice what was going on only moments ago? How could he forget? 
and his eyes widen as composure evaporates. He pulls his gun, pushing me out of the way with his free hand. I almost crash to the ground, flailing to keep my balance as a gunshot rings through the deserted neighborhood. Right. It's not enough that the dead weight is back, but you already let a warlock over here. So with his voice acting, it sounds like he was a little too close to the microphone because I'm getting some of that, like, reverberating feedback in my own ears. Warlock? I wasn't followed, except Arter. I whipped around to check on my temporary ally as Patrick fires his gun again. The second shot ricochets off of a magic shield. One of Arthur's eyebrows is drawn up and Smirk is tagging at his mouth. While well, his promise to find Patrick is fulfilled, he did agree to not to attack us. So, how long until Arthur decides that someone is shooting at him doesn't deserve mercy? Patrick, stop! Arthur's eyes have turned into slits as Grin draws his lips wider. Oh no. He's enjoying this. As the third shot crashes towards Arthur, Patrick's luck runs out. The same sort of bolt that obliterated the cell door zaps straight at his gun, which explodes into fireworks of twisting metal and burnt flesh. Patrick doesn't flinch. He doesn't grab his hand in pain. He fishes for his backup gun with his remaining hand, awkwardly attempting to cock it. Arter pauses before grimacing. I think your friend broke. The obvious glee at the fight has dropped from his face. It's a small solace. Patrick's head finally whip Biddy Biddy Biddy. Patrick's head whips back and forth between his confusion overtaking his need to attack Arter for a moment. What? Are you two in cahoots? Why didn't he ask earlier? No, Patrick, we've made a deal. I step between the two of them, holding out my hands to block as much of them from earth from each other as I can. It's way too late for that, isn't it? We had this all worked out. How did it go to hell so quickly? You made a deal with a warlock. It's a statement much more than a question. Yes. He pauses a beat, blood dripping from his mangled hand onto the grass behind me. Arthur hasn't made another move. That's got to be the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Who was to save him? Doesn't he understand? Wouldn't anyone with half an ounce of empathy have done the same? Would they? Did I make the wrong choice? Probably more stupid than making a deal with an outsider to gain magical powers. At this rate, will he bleed out? Patrick, your hand. He cocks his head before raising the bloody remains of his left hand, his face contorting in hate again. Yeah, he got me good. That one. Arthur is right. They broke him. He's broken. Doesn't it hurt? Now that he lifted his hand, the blood running along his shirt instead, mingling with the rain and dying at crimson along the way. Patrick giggles. <laughs> Hurt. I'm too late. Listen, honey. I had let this happen. What do you expect me to do? Curl up and cry like a baby? But he's not like the rest of the townspeople. Oh, there's something off. It may still be reversible. Patrick. Patrick! He bears me in a horrible mockery of my concern. How about you stop gawking like an idiot and make sure I don't bleed out instead, huh? He's right. I shrug off my backpack and dig until I find the first aid kit, closing the distance to Patrick. He holds out his injured arm for me to bandage while keeping his eyes trained on a spot behind me. A quick glance confirms the obvious. Arthur is still around, observing us with his arms crossed. Thanks much, Arthur. Now that our temporary alliance is at its ends, the far too familiar form of a 
dress weighs even heavier on my tongue. I sweat. So this is it. We'll get out of the situation without losing our lives. Despite their little misunderstanding. Or he's not leaving. I'm sorry that Patrick attacked you. Better safe than sorry. Archer shrugs. No harm done. He grins. To me, that is. Apologizing to warlocks is a funny way of exterminating them. Not very efficient, I'd wager. Doesn't he get it? Arthur helped me find you. Who knows what would have happened if we hadn't reached this place when we did. Did you notice what's going on? We're covering those things. He rolls his eyes at me. Oh, please. I had everything under control. Did he? Yeah, letting yourself be fed on by eldritch beasts sure screams control. Thank you, Arthur. Why is he butting in? Why is he still here? Did you need anything else? Did I forget some part of our deal? Is he waiting for further payment? Nah, just enjoying the show. That's a bit sick. Not as sick as blowing out several body parts within an hour of getting to know me, but... You think those bandages will keep enough blood in? I stare at the fabric already soaked through, pulling to tighten it. Patrick is far too pale. I should have kept the blood flow first. Maybe I can use my belt, but even then he needs a hospital. Or... If you want to watch, you could at least make yourself useful. It's best getting to you. No matter how much I press to try to stem the flow of blood, it won't stop. No, I'm fine. He steps closer, wet grass squelching beneath his boots. Just saying. You wouldn't have spoken to me this way ten minutes ago. I freeze, turning to check if I've gone too far. Arthur is smiling, and it's not menacing, shark-like one of the... one that threatens a fight. It's not scaring me. He's doing it on purpose, I think. Well, I told you I can't regenerate limbs. Then why blast them off? True, Patrick shot at him thrice. But it's not like he was in any danger. His shields were clearly holding up. I close my eyes. 